It's very valuable to have a relationship with somebody that understands your business, they understand what it is that you do and how you create value or what it is that you're trying to accomplish. But other than that, they're outside of your business. Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Welcome back to the Startup Vlog. This is episode number nine. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about the importance of accountability and support for entrepreneurs that are starting a new business. This is a topic that many people don't normally think of when they think about starting a new business, but it's a very important part of being successful in business in general, having outside support that can help us with certain areas of business. Because as an entrepreneur, especially as a new entrepreneur, it's very very easy to kind of get lost in the business, focusing on all kinds of different things and not necessarily focusing on the right things. And equally important is being objective and getting an outsider's perspective on your business to make sure that you're focused on the right things. It's one thing to be working hard and it's another thing entirely to be working on the right things. And then finally, there are situations where Extreme difficulty comes into the picture and having the ability to talk with others and work through things and get their feedback and get their input plays an important role in allowing you to work through very difficult challenges and ultimately succeed. Now, one thing worth noting here, and I think it was my dad that gave me this advice a few years back, as entrepreneurs, we rarely have people that we can naturally talk to about some of the more extreme difficulties in business. If we don't actually create relationships with other entrepreneurs and with people that are in a position to help us, well, then naturally in everyday business, certain issues come up where it's not really practical to talk about them with employees because they might be things that'll just stress out the team when meanwhile, you almost certainly will be able to eventually figure out a solution to the problem. So you don't necessarily want to kind of bring down the energy in the business. And likewise, going back to talk with your family sometimes is just bringing home negative energy. And even if you have a very supportive partner, it might not make a lot of sense to constantly be talking about business with your family so as entrepreneurs, we can find ourselves in a position where we don't really know who to talk to about some of the more difficult and pressing challenges that we're facing either in a brand new startup or even later in life as you've got a larger business and stresses tend to kind of scale up with the business in some cases. So it's worth noting that we need relationships. We need to develop a network of people that are facing similar challenges with whom we can have these very important conversations. A co-founder is a really great option, but generally speaking, you also wanna have other voices and other people that you can talk to when it comes to dealing with these challenges. So in this episode, we're gonna focus on three very important themes or categories. Number one is accountability. Number two is objectivity. And then number three is talking through challenges. So when it comes to accountability, this is especially important for brand new entrepreneurs, but it really plays a role for even more experienced entrepreneurs. And the idea here is when we're running our own business, we're not really accountable to anybody. We have people that might be working for us. We have people that whom we are the accountability for what they're pursuing, but especially for new entrepreneurs, when you're kind of setting out on your own for the first time, you're not really accountable to anybody. And so even if you are a hard worker, even if you have a very strong work ethic, you might end up kind of wandering, focusing on the things that you enjoy most, or simply not doing the things that need to be done despite working very hard on other areas of the business. So accountability is critical, not only to make sure that, again, you are working, but that you're working on the right things. Now. In my experience, the solution to the accountability problem is to create a relationship either with a mentor, with other entrepreneurs that are in a similar position to yourself, or with some kind of a business coach where you can enter into a, a paid relationship where they're helping you maybe on a weekly call or something like that. In my case, what I'm doing right now, as you know, I'm writing a book, I'm working with an accountability writing group where I connect twice a week, I jump on a quick video call, we talk about what we've accomplished over the last week, what we're working on now, and what we plan to achieve over the coming week. And that simple meeting where you're connecting with other people that are working on similar projects, you're sharing what it is that you're doing, and you're sharing what it is that you intend to do over the coming week, that creates a very nice sense of accountability where you know 
If you come back next week and you didn't do what you said you were going to do, well, that never feels good. So naturally, you're more inclined to hold yourself accountable to the things that you said you were going to do. But again, you have a bunch of different options here. You can find a mentor, you can find peers, other entrepreneurs who are starting a business, you can get a coach, or again, some kind of an accountability group. Now, for some of the things that we're gonna talk about here moving forward, I tend to prefer one-on-one -on -one relationships where you can really get into the details. But when it comes to accountability, it's probably the one category of the three that we're gonna cover here where more of a group setting is very practical and it works very well. But let's move on to objectivity. The idea here is that when we're busy in our business, when we're working on actually executing things in our business, we often lack a high level perspective. And what I have found to be true, and this really fits all kinds of areas of life, but especially in business, is it's much easier to stand back and look at somebody else's business and immediately point out some low hanging fruit, some very obvious things that they could be doing better to rapidly improve the business. But counterintuitively, or I guess in reverse, if we change our perspective, it's also very easy for somebody outside of our business to look at what we're doing and to have that same outsider's perspective and to share ideas and feedback with us. It's always easier when you're standing outside of something, you're not emotionally invested, you don't understand why certain choices were made in the future, you don't carry that baggage, you're not worried about how something got started or why it continues to be done. You simply look at it objectively from the outside and you say, well, that activity probably isn't very valuable. That over there should probably be getting done or something like that, right? It's very easy to look at a business from the outside and see where time is being wasted or where priorities are simply not being properly executed. So it's very valuable to have a relationship with somebody that understands your business, they understand what it is that you do and how you create value or what it is that you're trying to accomplish, but other than that, they're outside of your business. They're not incentivized to give you, you know, certain advice. They have no kind of skin in the game, so to speak, other than they want the best for you. So they're looking at what it is that you're doing and they're able to give you accurate and honest feedback about how you can improve your business. Now, when it comes to solving this problem, I think having a mentor is a really powerful option. I think having a relationship with two or three other entrepreneurs that are similarly building their own business where you can kind of meet on a regular basis and share what it is that you're working on and get that outsider's perspective, that's a very powerful solution. I think business coaches can be helpful here, but probably less so as they may not have practical experience with the kind of thing that you're actually doing. So I would lean towards mentors and I would lean towards peers, other entrepreneurs who are doing what you're doing, but in another field or in some kind of unrelated way where they have, they're not in competition with you. They don't kind of have any reason to give you bad advice. They're just simply trying to help you and share their particular perspective on what it is that you're doing. But very important to have an outsider's perspective, whether that's a mentor or whether that's another entrepreneur. This isn't necessarily as important to meet on regularly, with accountability, I think there's a ton of value in kind of setting a weekly or bi-weekly cadence there where you're meeting with people on a pretty consistent basis. Whereas when it comes to objectivity, I think you can more kind of connect on a monthly basis. Of course you can on a weekly, but more on a monthly basis, or even in some cases you can get away with a quarterly basis and it gives you kind of more time to reflect on the ideas that you've gained from this outsider perspective and to go back to the business and make some changes and then connect again in the future to see kind of what worked, what didn't, and plan forward from there. Now, when it comes to the third category of talking through challenges, this is incredibly important because there will come times in your startup or your business journey where you don't have all the answers and where you're facing some incredibly stressful decisions or just some very difficult challenges, whether it's financial hardship, whether it's having to fire somebody who you may have a very close relationship with. There are all kinds of experiences in business that aren't particularly enjoyable and for which oftentimes there's a great benefit in talking about these things with other people. But as I mentioned earlier, there isn't by default people in your life that you can talk 
really easily about these things. You can't talk to employees about financial challenges. You don't want to stress them out when oftentimes there's little that they can do about it other than now feel bad or feel worried about the future. So it doesn't really make sense to bring it up with them. And again, you don't necessarily want to bring home all this negative energy to your personal life. And so it's very important to have people that you can talk with about these kinds of challenges. Again, whether it's financial hardship, whether it's just a very difficult day at work, or whether it's having to fire somebody, whatever it might be, you need an opportunity to discuss and talk through these kinds of things to find potential solutions. Now, counterintuitively, you don't necessarily need to talk with somebody that has all the answers. In fact, oftentimes the very best conversation you can have is with somebody who's just simply a very great listener and who has great questions that can cause you to kind of work through the challenge on your own. So oftentimes what you really need here is something like a business coach or another entrepreneur or even a mentor, but again, they don't necessarily have to have the answers. They don't even need to be an entrepreneur. They don't even need to have business experience. Oftentimes they just need to be able to ask you the right questions and allow you to talk through the challenge so that you can find solutions. So when it comes to talking through these kinds of problems, it is very practical to have some kind of a business coach. I'm in a position where fortunately my wife does enjoy these kinds of conversations, but at the same time, I don't like to bring this kind of thing up constantly because it can be a downer at times. But a business coach, an entrepreneur relationship, a mentor, fortunately for me, my dad, is in business. I have three brothers that are all entrepreneurial and they're very interested in business as well. So typically that is where I turn to. I also have some relationships with past co-founders and other things like that, where I do feel I've got a number of people that I can talk to. But I would highly recommend if you don't have somebody like this in your life, find somebody, find a handful of people who you feel that you can have very deep, honest, transparent conversations with, where you have no concerns about actually sharing everything that you're working on, talking about your weaknesses, talking about your stressors, talking about anxiety, talking about all the challenging aspects of life that maybe we don't wanna talk to just anybody about. Find this kind of person and create this relationship and be there for them and hopefully they can be there for you because in business, again, you will face these kinds of challenges and if you don't have people around you who can help you work through them, then they can be needlessly complicated and that much more difficult to work through. Now, bringing everything together here, having talked about accountability, objectivity, and talking through challenges, my strong preference, just in general, is to form relationships with a handful of other entrepreneurs who I feel very comfortable talking about a wide range of issues, where with the accountability side, it does work to meet with a group. Generally speaking, I personally much prefer one-on-one conversations, either over phone or video chat or in person, because it's so much easier to go deeper, it's so much easier to just be brutally honest, and when you're not in a group setting, you don't feel like you're kind of wasting everybody's time. It's much easier to really focus in with one person on what it is that you're facing to get their perspective, and then As you see fit, you might engage one or two other people, but again, in kind of a more one-on-one setting where you can go much deeper and not only do you get more time to kind of share what it is that you're going through, but they kind of have the floor as well to give you the feedback you need without kind of taking a backseat thinking somebody else might give you the suggestion. So I have a strong preference for one-on-one when it comes to objectivity and talking through challenges and to a certain degree, accountability as well, but The accountability side for me is where kind of a group setting I find can be even more beneficial for that particular area. So anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope this was helpful. I hope you go out and nurture these kinds of relationships. They play a critical role in your success, especially when you face hardships or challenges. So invest in these kinds of relationships, be there for other people, and you know, put yourself in a position where you're willing to be vulnerable and share the things that you're working through so that they can be there for you as well. Anyway, again, that's it for this episode. In the very next episode, I'm gonna share my biggest startup regrets. I'm gonna tell you about what I've been working on, what I wish I did differently, 
and just provide you with a quick update on my progress. If you have any questions about anything that we covered in this episode or anything that you would like to see addressed in a future episode, let me know in the comment section and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you for tuning in and I look forward to connecting with you again in the next one.